The second speaker of this session is Robert. He's going to talk about robustness of fixed points. So please take it away. Thank you very, very much for the introduction and the organizers uh, to let me speak here. Uh, so this is about some joint work with uh, Bjarne Berg and Langena, both at Langena Data, both at Cambridge. And if you're interested in the work, uh, we also have the preprint on the archive. Um, Uh, so, so the work is about robustness of uh, fixed point equations of uh, states and channels. So let me start with the fixed point equation. This is how I write states. This is how I write CPTP maps or channels. And we have a fixed point equation if kind of the channel leaves the state invariant. And we want to study the robustness of it. So we introduce some error parameter epsilon. Um, so we say we have an approximate fixed point equation if this fixed point equation holds true up to error epsilon in trace distance. And the overall scheme of this talk, um, or the motivating question is whether certain structural results which hold true for exact fixed point equations can be proven to hold also now up to small error for approximate fixed point equation. This is kind of like the scheme. And to approach this question a bit, I want to start with like a bit more concrete mathematical question. Uh, this is question one. So, okay, you could ask whether for such an approximate fixed point equation, there's always a a new state which is close to an original one. So with closeness, I mean I have like an approximation function, possibly dependent on the dimension, which decays as this error parameter epsilon goes to zero. And I then demand that this new state is an exact fixed point of this new channel. Okay, this is some, some naive question. And okay, everyone who took a linear algebra course, so everyone in this room knows, nope, this is not true. Um, this holds true for, or this is like impossible for general linear maps. I now have like a quantum state and channel example. So I can pick kind of rho to be the zero state and to be like almost the identity. I replace it with like epsilon probability with the one state. Because n is almost the identity, I obviously have like an approximate fixed point equation, but n has a uh, unique fixed point state, which is the one state. This is far from rho. So I cannot fix the fixed point equation by just changing the state. Okay, maybe I can do the opposite. So this is some question two. What happens if I only ask to find like a new um, channel, which is now close to the original one? Here I mean in diamond norm. Uh, I have a new approximation function G, which also should decay. And then I demand that the new channel has the original state rho as an exact fixed point. Okay, and this is maybe not immediately clear what should happen here, but now we can actually use positivity or the demand that the new uh, map M should also be positive to find that this is also not possible. So this is the counter example. Uh, we can kind of like use it. It's like on a Q-trit or something higher dimensional. Um, rho is kind of almost a two state. So we mix it a bit with the zero state. N is a unitary channel which replay or like switches um, zero and one swaps them. So it's like the Pauli X on those states and doesn't do anything on the two state. And now, okay, we have an approximate fixed point equation because and is essentially doing nothing on the two state and rho is almost a two state. But now assume there exists a new channel M, which is close to N, such that we have an exact fixed point equation. And okay, rewriting this re uh, fixed point equation and putting them into like this expectation value with the one state, um, okay, this just gives zero, because rho doesn't have any support on the on one state, you get kind of like just this overlap. Um, then you can use positivity of M to get this inequality and just kind of like cut out the two part of rho. But now we use that um, M is close to N and we know how N X on zero, it just swamps to the one state. So kind of you get like this inequality and because G decays to zero, for epsilon small enough, this thing is strictly bigger than zero. So now okay, you read from left to right, zero is strictly bigger than zero. So this is a, contradic oops, this is a contradiction, so this cannot hold true. Okay, so both questions have negative answers. Maybe if we now kind of do both at the same time, maybe we're more lucky. So it gets a bit more complicated. We want to change both state, both channel. They should be close to the original ones. And we want now an exact fixed point equation. Maybe this is now true. Okay. We can actually make this even more complicated and be interested in like certain structures. All of the states and channels are, should satisfy. Um, so these are parameterized by these sets S and C, which I introduced in red here. You can think of maybe you want them to be separable states or unital channels or something like that. And they kind of enter the problem in two ways as a promise that the original state and channel are of that form. So you have kind of like some knowledge about them, but also as a demand that the new state and new channel are also of the same form. So kind of like on this level, it makes the problem easier, but on that 
problem, the introduction of these structures makes it harder. And if kind of, oh, what's happening? Okay. If this is possible with universal approximation function, if we can always find these new states and channels, um, universal, I mean, independent of the original state and channel only depending on these sets, then we say approximate fixed point equations are fixable. So this is some definition. And now you see on this slide, I don't have much space for like another red box. So I'm a bit more hopeful that the answer is actually true here. And this is, this is the case. So now we finally find a yes, okay, and we find this proposition. Um, this is for a finite dimension Hilbert space, uh, two sets kind of like structures which are closed, S and C being closed. And we want them to have like at least one fixed point pair in them because otherwise we will not be able to fix these approximate fixed point equations. And then in the diff, uh, kind of in the sense of the addition before we always have fixability. And the result relies on a compactness argument. This is why we find existence of such approximation functions, but like in a rather implicit way, we don't get like explicit convergence rates. We don't really know how these F and G look like. We just know that they exist in, on this level. So now to connect this kind of rather abstract question about approximate fixed point equation to something people care maybe a bit more, I want to connect them to like a, my motivating example, uh, which is the Rustin's theory of quantum Markov chains. So let me remind you what quantum Markov chains are. Uh, those are, for the short cases, uh, tripartite quantum states, rho ABC, which have conditional mutual information, AC given B equal to zero. Um, so by PET's recovery, uh, this is equivalent for a recovery channel to exist. So kind of operational, this means you can forget about system C, you can like trace it out, and then recover the full state and all of its correlation on ABC by just looking at the system B. Okay, so this is quite nice. Um, and then in the paper by Hayden, Jotza, Petz, and Winter from 2004, relying on some kind of structural result about fixed point, the so-called Quashimoto uh, theorem, they proved that you can kind of like have like explicit, explicit knowledge of how the correlations in the state look like. So they have this algebraic characterization, which tells you there's an orthogonal sum decomposition of the um, Hilbert space B, which is followed by the tripartite Hilbert space in, in this uh, tripartite state in this way. And okay, this com uh, formula might look a bit complicated to you if you haven't seen it before, but kind of what this tells you is this is a natural generalization of the conditional independence we know from classical Markov chains, because this defines like a projective measurement on system B, okay? And you can do this and then condition on the outcome, let's say J, the post measurement state here is a product state. So kind of you have independence of A and C condition on the outcome. Just as a uh, classical Markov chain. So now I'm interested in robustness theory. So let's do approximate quantum Markov chains. We don't have uh, conditional mutual information equal to zero, but rather small. And this is kind of like, especially in the quantum world, a very natural thing to study because uh, people expect and also know in certain cases that uh, if you look at the Gibbs state um, uh, of like a local Hamiltonian. Um, for B being like a sufficiently large region separating A and C, the condition mutual information is not exactly equal to zero, but decays in some sense in, in the size of this beam. So this is kind of like a relevant thing for condensed metaphysics. And people have studied that a lot um, and tried to recover kind of like these characterizations. So in this, in this breakthrough paper by Fawzi and Renner, they have found that there exists a recovery channel. So we get still like approximate recovery now with some uh, scaling of the error parameter being square root of epsilon, importantly, independent of the dimensions of the system. Um, and kind of now, if you read this whole from left to right, here kind of uh, quantum Markov chains, exact ones are characterized by satisfying a fixed point equation for a specific kind of channel. Therefore, approximate fixed uh, quantum Markov chains are characterized by satisfying approximate fixed point equation, again, of a uh, channel of the specific structure. Natural question to ask is, okay, whenever I have an approximate quantum Markov chain, does there exact, exist an exact one close to it? And do we recover an approximate orthogonal sum decomposition, kind of like this thing here? And classically, the, the answer is very simple. So that's just because you can write the condition mutual information of a tripartite probability distribution at the, uh, as the minimal kullback leibler distance of P to the set of uh, classical Markov chains. And therefore, uh, you recover all structural properties you're interested in uh, approximately from, from, those, from this exact Markov chain. And if you're more interested in total variation distance, you just do Pinsker. 
but quantumly kind of like upper bounding this, this minimal distance to the set of quantum Markov chains by some function which decays as the conditional mutual information goes to zero is an open problem, in fact. Um, and actually, there are many negative results which show you that this upper, any such upper bound must be dimension dependent. So we have like a couple of lower bounds, a couple of counterexamples telling you that the whole problem is much more complicated in the quantum world compared to the classical world. Um, so because I have this approximate fixed point equation, I can essentially apply the result on fixability, which I mentioned before, to the setup um, for kind of like general states and uh, general states on this tri parted Hilbert space and channels of the specific form being this recovery uh, form. And by that, I find like a first application, which is robustness of quantum Markov chains. So whenever I have an approximate quantum Markov chain draw ABC with small condition mutual information, I find an exact quantum Markov chain sigma ABC close to is where like this uh, approximation function decays to zero as epsilon goes to zero. Um, however, as the result still relies on compactness, I don't have like explicit control on this function f. It's rather implicit. I just know its existence. To close this gap a bit, um, I want to study some concept which I call rapid fixability. And this essentially asks whether for like abstract approximate fixed point equations, I can find convergence rates, good control on these functions f and g. Um, and what I would like to have is that they are of a specific form, like you see here. So kind of um, the, the, the way d, the dimension in epsilon enter is a bit disentangled. So they just enter as factors. And the convergence as epsilon goes to zero is rather fast, so like some kind of root here. And if this is possible, uh, I say approximate fixed point equations for this pair S and C for these structures are rapidly fixable. Okay? And in the paper, we show that this is actually uh, possible to do for many interesting structures. The most natural one is just kind of like general states and channels. And we have the following theorem. So whenever you have a state and a channel satisfying this approximate fixed point equation, you can find like a new state and a new channel root epsilon close to the original ones with an exact fixed point equation. Um, what I want to highlight here is that we don't have any dimension dependence in the scaling. And furthermore, that the scaling is essentially tight. So there are uh, families of states or like kind of counterexamples rho and n where we find like lower bound on like this maximal, um, maximum of like the possible approximation function. And there we see like a root epsilon scaling at least. Um, we develop a few uh, uh, techniques to, to uh, prove rapid fixability for many other structures. So this is kind of the result I mentioned, general states and channels. You can do classical states and channels like here. Uh, so this is like probability vectors and stochastic matrices. We still find like the root epsilon scaling. Then we could do something which might interest you, which are unitary channels. Now we find like a bit more complicated uh, approximation function with um, like uh, explicit dimension scaling, mixed unitary channels, another even more complicated looking function, unital channels. And then we go to the bipartite setup where we have um, now only the pure states of some bipartite Hilbert space HAB and C being the set of local channels, uh, which act trivially on system A. And there we again find rapid fixability. On the other hand, this is holds not true generically or like for all structures of interest, um, so one structure I was really interested in, which really much connects to the quantum Markov chains, is the following, which is, again, the bipartite setup. But now you have like general mixed states, and C, again, being the set of local quantum channels. In that case, we actually find impossibility of rapid fixability. So we find some kind of lo uh, lower bound on the possible approximation function. And this is kind of like the last thing I wanted to talk about here and kind of flesh this out a bit how this works. In order to do this, um, I first need to extend the question of fixability to now doing multiple fixed point x at once. Um, so OK, it's like just natural generalization. We just do two. Let's say I have two states, one channel, two approximate fixed point equations. And we can ask, do we find like a new, a new two closed states and one new channel, such that we have two exact fixed point equations, so like one channel which fixes both. OK? And here, I also already demand that the scaling is like kind of pre in this preferred rapid way. Um, and okay, this is some question you might ask, and you might be hopeful, but no, this is not general and not possible in general, and this is even impossible in the classical case already. So there is like kind of a family of probability vectors p1 and p2 over kind of like dimension d and stochastic matrix t, 
such that we have like approximate fixed point equation with some error which decays exponentially in the dimension. But uh, whenever you find two new probability vectors, Q1 and Q2, in a new stochastic matrix, such that you have two um, exact fixed point equations, at least one of the approximation must be really, really off. So you have like kind of a constant lower bound on either the stochastic matrix or one of the probability distributions. So this is really kind of like a far gap between something which goes exponentially down and like a constant lower bound. And to connect this now back to the bipartite uh, case for, for quantum states, what you can do, you can embed this counter, uh, this counter example, putting them onto the diagonal of two quantum states. So you define like this row P1, row P2, then you put them into like two registers of a, a classic, a bipartite classic state, row AB. You can also define like a new local channel, NB, through the stochastic matrix T. Um, by what I've shown you earlier, this local channel and this bipartite state satisfy an approximate fixed point equation, again, with exponentially scaling error. But by the lower bounds I mentioned to you, you can kind of work out yeah, what the lower bound for this odd-looking optimization problem. So you try to find like the best new bipartite state, the next, uh, best local channel. And then you try to uh, find like the best distance uh, in diamond norm of to the original channel and uh, trace distance to the original state. And this scales like in this logarithmic, at least in this logarithmic way in epsilon. Okay. And by that you see, okay, I cannot find new state and channel satisfy an exact fixed point equation uh, with error perimeter scaling in this in this desirable rapid way. And this is just this impossibility statement. So as a corollary, we can summarize: we have impossibility to find rapid fixability for general uh, bipartite states and local channels. And as the whole uh, counterexample is actually classical, this already shuts it down for bipartite probability distributions and local stochastic matrices. Um, so I want to kind of close with some open problems. Um, so I've mentioned a couple of upper bounds on these approximation functions uh, for like general mixed uh, states and, and channels. Um, and I showed you there that they are, these functions are optimal, but in general, I, I don't know much whether they are optimal, especially kind of in the case of unitary channels and unitary channels, I've seen that there's some dimension dependence, whether this dimension dependence is necessary, I actually don't know. So it would be really cool to find like uh, lower bounds and to, to prove that this dimension dependence is actually necessary. Um, and then the relevant uh, open problem, which connects back to the motivating example is like improve the result on robustness of quantum Markov chains. Okay, so what we would like to have is an explicit upper bound on the distance um, from row ABC to the set of quantum Markov chains. This, which decays in a very nice, fast, desirable way as the condition mutual information goes to zero. So this is kind of like the particular form I write here, which would be nice to have is again inspired by like this rapid fixability business. Uh, so you have like a disentangled way how the dimension enter into the, the bound and how the condition mutual information enters into the bound. And obviously what you really would like to determine are all of these constants, the A, B, 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 C. For example, what is not shut down by, by the counter examples and would be nice to have for kind of like, again, thinking about Gibbs states uh, taking thermodynamic limits is that you might not have like any dependence on the dimension DB here. So this, this BB here is equal to zero, but we don't have any kind of bound like that. We also don't know whether such thing can hold true uh, so this is kind of like a big open problem. And I would like to thank you a lot for your attention. So the, thanks for the great talk, Robert. And um, we have plenty of time for the questions. So any questions? Uh, sorry if you mentioned it in the talk and I missed it, but uh, how critical is the rapid fixability property for what you have in mind? I mean, okay, if you want to get specifically this kind of dimension scaling, then I guess so, but like, is there a specific reason why you want like power scaling in the dimension and uh, the epsilon? I think I, I just like kind of the form of it and I thought kind of often you have like, uh, you know how epsilon kind of like this thing scales in the dimension of B, so you kind of want to uh, shut down scaling you have here by the scaling here. So kind of like, I think they should enter in some sense on the same footing. Hmm, I see, I see. Um, 
But okay, I think like the way I came up with the rapid fixability form is that I try to prove like upper bounds for several structures and they always look like that form. And okay, then I generalize this, try to actually prove like something similar for the robust, uh, for the quantum Markov chains. And the thing there is like the, the structure of interest is actually the one where I have like an impossibility statement. So if you could prove nice upper bound for this structure here, you could kind of plug it into the construction of uh, like uh, where you of this orthogonal sum decomposition um, to find uh, like good bounds on the on the distance to quantum Markov chain, um, and therefore it's kind of like said that we have the counter example here because this doesn't lead too much. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Jim. More questions? Uh, hi. Thank. Thanks for a very nice talk. So I just have a naive question regarding the very very first part of the talk so you have two no-go theorems for fixability of just a state and the fixability of the quantum channel but that's generic right but if i promise for example the channel case that it has some structure do we have sufficiently large class of channels that you can fix in that way uh counter examples really kind of like a random in i mean it's, i think like the counter examples are just the uh, kind of like things I came up with. I think like once you, like the, for the first question, I think most things will, will fail. So if you try to find like a new state, this, if you just try to find like a new state, I think you can for most channels of interest cut down. Like whenever you have like uniqueness of fixed point space or like kind of where you control the fixed point space of this map N fairly well, you know kind of like uh, how, this, how this fails. Um, and the other example here, the counter example is like a unitary channel. Um, so it's already kind of like a nice structure where the counter example hold. But no, I, I don't know whether I kind of like uh, you might be able to fix the fixed one equation by just changing one if you have like a specific other structure. Um, Thank you. I do have a question. Uh, regarding your open problem, uh, the uh, like, do you do you do we know any of interesting upper bounds that uh are not related that uh, they involve other quantities and not the mutual information? Yep. So like the the your upper bound your yep. your question about do do we know of interesting upper bounds that do do involve other quantities like not the mutual information? Ah, okay. Uh, no. Uh, so kind of, I mean, okay, it depends on what you like to have. I mean, you can write down something almost trivial, but like kind of when you want to start with something entropic here, which implies approximate recoverability or so, you won't get this. So like my starting point, okay, I write it here in terms of the condition mutual information, because this is maybe like something which is a bit more known. It's also nice to have like here something purely algebraic and here's something entropic. Yeah. Uh, but my starting point, as you might guess from like the whole fixability business, is actually I have approximate recoverability, and then I try to to find like a closed quantum uh, Markov chain, and uh, everything kind of which goes in that direction is completely open. I see. Okay. Do you have time? Don't be shy. Sorry, this one I think is just a lack of background in the field, but uh, so I was just like vaguely aware of the fact that um, low CQMI is not quite the same thing as close to a quantum Markov chain. But so you're saying that the only sense in which this there's counterexamples is that there's a dimension dependency in this. I mean, we have kind of explicit lower bounds in the sense of we have families of states running through the dimension mm -hmm. where you know okay the condition mutual decays as like one over d essentially or so but you're constant away over the whole family from the set of markov chain they kind right. of know a bit the scaling and therefore there's there must be a dimension dependence yeah uh, yeah yeah but in the sense that um the the structure of these counter examples is such that in some sense uh if you want to get so to speak, like arbitrarily bad violations of this property, then you must also go to arbitrarily high dimension. Sorry, could you... Uh, sorry, as in the classical version would be that if you have low CQMI, then you're close to a Markov yeah, chain. Yeah. Quantum, this does not exactly... This property doesn't carry over. But if you want to get a 
arbitrarily bad violation of this property in the quantum case, you would also have to go to arbitrarily high dimension. Uh, do you know also kind of like results in a kind of fixed dimension um, where you know that the scaling you would like kind of like in the classical case, you see like linear scaling, or I think it's square root scaling or so, and you know that it's kind of like the scaling, uh, how the error parameter enters is kind of worse. So there's a dimension lower bound, but also kind of like how the, like the, the, the root power essentially is. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we know if the, the dimension dependence is polynomial? Could it be like super polynomial? Also no. So like lower bounds are all, I think, worst one I know is like lock, kind of you have a, dec a decaying, or it's like a D over lock D, I think. That's the worst we know. Okay. Uh, and this is kind of in the A system and the C system. But okay, it could be like way worse, so this is all open. Final questions? Well, if not, let's uh, thank Robert again. <laughs>